I want people that are real that I want to attract into yeah. my personal brand. So I, I market it a lot differently through through faith. And I think a lot of people need that that faith, like to just believe that there's something greater. Welcome to the Kind Boss Podcast, brought to you by Outsourcing Angel, an Australian-based social enterprise that specializes in helping business owners free up their time and reduce staffing costs, while helping to create employment opportunities for people in developing countries. Visit OutsourcingAngel.com today. Now, let me welcome your host, Lynn Pedetti. Hi listeners, I'm Lynn Peretti, the host of the Kind Boss Podcast, the podcast that shines a spotlight on bosses that lead by doing good and being kind. And today we'll be speaking to R.C. Simon, founder of Legacy X State Marketing. His primary mission is spreading God's work. He does this in his role as pastor at Bringing Families Back Ministries, a church in Las Vegas, America. R.C. aspires to change the world through working with companies that are able to impact people people's lives significantly through promoting talented artists and through encouraging positive movements in both his company and his church. Listen on and find out how he inspires, motivates and spreads kindness within his community and beyond. Hi everybody, so welcome to another series of The Kind Boss. Um, and yeah, on this show today, I'm so excited to bring you RC Simon all the way from Vegas. How are you today? I am well. How are you doing, Lynn? I'm doing okay. <laughs> like I got to admit things have changed, you know, every yeah. single day has changed. And, you know, a few weeks ago we thought we were fine and, you know, every day is just being a little bit more, I guess, a little bit scarier, but still very, I mean, I'm still very positive, you know, um, yes. And so, yeah, anyway, today I want to really talk to you about what's really going on anyway. So how are you today? Awesome. It's been a great day. Very interesting season right now. Yes. But, you know, with what we're doing, it's being online is, is always a blessing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, tell us your journey of like, you know, what are you doing right now? And, you know, what was your journey like before and where it's taken you to now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so back in 2013, I actually started like uh, network marketing. So I did that for a couple of years and that's what kind of got me into the whole uh, mindset, entrepreneur, personal development, and just learning about uh, businesses and uh, online too. So it was actually like a skincare company. Yeah. So I was selling their products for three, almost four years Wow. and, it, and I was running pretty hard. Yeah. Um, I was, I was 20, 21 years old. So yeah, um, at, yeah at that time, that's kind of like what, what kind of got me interested. And then Fast forwarding up until today, uh, I met some people that are part of that company that kind of leveraged me to get a job opportunity with one of like a big influencer, big internet marketer. If you guys know, his name's Ty Lopez. Yes, and, yes. Uh, yeah, so I started working with him for uh, for a, a few years. That was back in uh, early 2016. Yeah, and you were working for his company, or was were you a yes. was he a client of yours? Yeah. No, no, yeah, I, I was working. Um, oh, nice. For his company, so tell, I, all right, tell us a little <laughs> bit an insight into how the company was. You know, was it fast yeah. paced? Was it like how was it? Yeah, it was a uh, it, it was a great experience. It kind of helped me uh, kind of build who I am today. I guess you know, working from the inside. So I started off with uh, in customer support. So yeah. I did that for about eight nine months. Then I got bumped up to uh, the sales team. And my second year there, and then my third year there, I was actually managing the sales team. Yeah. So yeah, I was just, you know, kind of bumping up, but working from the inside out, cause he was just getting big at the time mm. with his, uh, here in my garage, uh, ad and the 67 steps. So he was getting big and kind of blowing up and then he built, uh, his SMMA program, um, in, in 2016. And that kind of blew and it exploded his exposure to a different level. Yeah. So yeah, tell me more about his, I guess, because I know you're big on personal branding and that's what you, you, you really teach people about. So what yes. was his strategy? Yeah, Cause I know not everyone agrees with the whole, um, you know, showing car thingy and, you know, being yeah. really outspoken. What's your view yeah. and take on that? You know, I guess it depends on the person's like values and morals and what they believe. Um, I think Ty is, he was a great internet marketer. Like he's a good marketer. He knows how to, mm -hmm. Because once you get someone's attention with that three to five seconds, right, that attention span, then he goes, hey, you know, it's not just about the cars or the fancy house, but it's these books that I've been reading and all these people that have written stories about their expertise and a whole life 
of what they've done to succeed at that level. Yeah. And I think that's what's so good about what Ty did was he studied a lot of great people, read a lot of different books, different perspectives. And that's kind of like how he long-term was able to monetize it based on what he actually likes, you know? Yeah. He does like cars. He likes cars. He says yes. he's had uh, like a Lambo even before he he did all that stuff. Like he's had the nice things. It's yeah. just, it's just like social media just kind of magnified it. Yeah, it's sort of like, um, it was a dilemma for me when it comes to branding in that way. Like I sort of know that unless you show people what they really want, which is success and all that, you know, luxury yes. things, you're not going to get their attention. You know, if you're just kind of like playing a little bit too timid, then you yeah. might not get the attention. But then the, the dilemma is kind of like, I don't want to be seen as this like, you know, right. showing off kind of person. So it's sort <laughs> of like a, that yeah. Yeah. The, the dilemma. Yeah. How do you yeah. feel for yourself? Like, how would you approach it? Um, I'm actually a, a total, totally different. I'm actually total, total opposite of that because you know, my, my other background is how my, uh, my calling to ministry kind of came. Yes. So also like as like a, a youth millennial pastor, you know, I just want to, I want to be able to attract the right people, especially mm. to my brand. I mean, I have a business mindset and then you also have the love of God, but it's not that God doesn't want us to prosper, right? Like it's yeah. not it's none of that. It's like the the Bible's total opposite of that. So my whole like way of how I want to I want to attract the right people because right. he was attracting a certain a, a certain level of people out of, people that were desperate. They saw that, but they they thought you know they saw that instant gratification. And I, I want people that are real that I want to attract into yeah. my personal brand. So I, I market it a lot differently through through faith. And I think a lot of people need that, that faith, like to just believe that there's something greater. Yeah. You've totally answered the dilemma I've always had about this. So basically I was having a dilemma, but until now you explain, like, if I did that, I might have the attention, but it's just the right. wrong attention or the attention of people that are wanting uh, success in materialistic ways. Right. Whereas right. the ones that um, you, I really want are ones like me, which don't need that. So you just yeah. have to be confident in pursuing a strategy that, suits with you even if it's not as effective as other people doing the other method right <laughs> for, uh, sure. Yeah, for sure yeah you could, yeah you could just yeah. see it i mean there's a lot of people that do you know they spend their money they make a lot right away and then they'll spend it and you know in times like this where people are predicting a recession type of you mm -hmm. know a, a time right now i think the people that are ha that have such big overhead they're gonna have to downscale this is why yes. people are getting rid of employees this is why i think it all starts with um with focusing on like once you start employing people and mm. then it starts going down, not focusing on the money, but focusing on the people that are at the front line building. Yeah. It, right. And yeah. even if you're not making money for years, you're still, you're not going to be letting people go because during a recession or during a time when there's not much coming in, you're so focused and your values are there. And also it helps people long-term, mm -hmm. like it helps you long-term because of how you're building your company and the sustainability of it. Yeah. I've seen companies that are just going like this and people that are struggling because they've spent that type of money. You don't even see a lot of these people that used to flash that stuff. Mm. They kind of fell off grid, you know? So the sustainability of it too, and just being wise with the income, being wise with how it's coming in. And I don't need to do that. I don't need a flash. I have friends that are crushing it too. And they're, yeah. you know, they're buying multiple properties and yeah. they don't even own it. You know, they're just renting it just to yeah. have it. And yeah. That's fine. You know, if, they, if that's how they want to market themselves. Yeah. I love that. And, you know, when we met, um, I told you that I was a new Christian. I am completely yes. brand new. And I almost felt like God wanted me to know him just before the coronavirus hit because it really wow. gave me so much strength, you know, like through this, I'm kind of riding it. Of course, it's a lot more intense, but in terms of fearfulness, like I'm not fearing it, you know, I'm more like kind of curious mm -hmm. to see how this is all going to pan out. And, wow. um, you know, you're pretty much, uh, to me, like I'm describing as holding the horn of the, of the uh, bull and just riding with it. And it's kind of like right. rocky right now. But um, <laughs> yeah, tell me more about how, you know, I guess your pastor experience and or, or mm -hmm. knowledge around that and how it's really helping on, how it's helping your entrepreneur journey. Um, yeah. 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 It's, it's really, um, it's, it's humbling me because the way that I would have done business, even till this day, I'd be very disappointed in myself because I'm not hitting certain goals that, my natural mind wants, but God's like, Hey, I got a, I got a better plan. You know, mm -hmm. God's word says that our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways. So there's a different way, but it also says that he's going to grant us the desires of our heart as long as mm -hmm. we delight in the Lord. So my whole thing with it now is just like, you know, I'm just going to keep doing God's will. I'm going to keep building. I know that in, in, in Psalms one, it talks about that whatever we do, as long as we don't go under the counsel of the ungodly, 
Mm -hmm. And I would have taken business deals that weren't from the Lord, that weren't from God. I would have taken those, but I had to walk away from it, had to kind of cover myself because I don't want to touch brands that I don't feel good in my spirit to help build up. So it gives, it built, there's a lot of discipline. There's a lot of submissiveness that you need, but at the end of it all, like you're going to feel, you're going to feel fulfilled, you know, not just a lot of people, we have a lot of potential out there. And if we were to, if I were to fulfill my potential, yeah, bigger, uh, bigger goals would have been hit. But God says, you know what? I don't want you to fulfill your potential. I want you to fulfill your purpose. Yes. Yes. Jesus had so much power. Yeah. But he submitted himself so he can get onto that cross and he fulfilled his purpose. He could have reigned on this world, came, you know, they thought he was going to come in like a white stallion and be the king of kings and the Lord of lords, which he is. But he says, my kingdom isn't here on earth. My kingdom's above. Oh, so it. we're here to fulfill our purpose, mm-hmm. submitting to God, but he's going to bless us. He's going to pour out so much. And I just believe it by faith yeah. that that's going to happen. There's this verse in Proverbs where it says, the wealth of the unrighteous is going to transfer to the righteous. Okay. So there's a transferring even yeah. during times like this that is happening, but also we got to be wise in how we move, how God wants us to move. So there's, there's a lot of different types of wisdom on how God wants us to move in order to take that wealth transfer. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, I love that. And you know, yeah. um, Normally, I'm not very religious at all. Up until this year, I was just not religious. I was very spiritual. And the reason why I was spiritual is that I've actually experienced so many hardship from young and and being able to get past it and being able to learn all the lessons of life. Um, And at the time, I just kind of thought like, um, yeah, I just, I knew there was a divine universe or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I never would have thought that I would actually become a Christian or become religious, right? And right. so um, I guess I'll, if anyone's listening to this and you're like so not religious and whatever, well, you can you know, count on me to knowing that this is a person that was non-religious but living the firsthand experience with what life is all about that took me to a journey to now yes. I know God. And um, it just really made me to become like a you live as a better person. You realize that it's more about who you become. It's really not all about the materialistic things. And then business becomes a lot more of a place to serve versus a place to get. Because even when you start to uh, receive money and receive the wealth you've always wanted, you realize it's not that different. Like as in like, you know, it's like how happy you are as a person is already there. Like it doesn't matter if you've given more. And so, um, yeah, for those of you who, um, religious and listening to this, you know, don't feel afraid of, uh, I guess, being a bit open to um, what we're trying to say here. And yeah. Yeah. yeah and I can, add, I can add on that because um, my whole life I was running away from the church, my whole mm. life, you know, I was part of something that I didn't believe. Like I just, it, I, I felt like I was forced into it, but it wasn't until a couple of years back, almost three years now that I got 100%. I said, you know what? I, there's something bigger out there. Like I, I don't feel fulfilled on the inside. Yeah. And I was always walking away from religion. I was like, Hey, I'm not religious. I, I was telling all my family that and they're like, Hey, we're not either. And I was like, what do you mm. mean? They're like, we're not religious, but we're relationship driven. So mm. we believe that you can have a relationship because we believe not in religion. We believe in relationship with our heavenly father. Yeah. And I was like, Whoa, that's something different because Now I'm like opening up my mind, but there's something, there's things that God can give us that no amount of money, right? Nothing Mm -hmm. on this world can give us, which is peace, which is joy, which is love. They actually did a poll. There was this poll that they've done for like millennials and younger people in, in high school and college. And a majority of people were said, Hey, um, what do you, what are the top three? Why are you doing what you're doing? They're like, Hey, all I'm looking for is love. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for happiness and I'm looking for peace. This is why I'm joining this sorority. This is why I'm joining this, you know, these, these clubs and all these things. Cause I want to feel like I belong. I want to, I want that love. I want to feel like I belong. And it's funny because when you start studying the word of God, you'll exactly see exactly that the yes. spirit, right? Yes. The fruits of the spirit, which is uh-huh. love, joy, and peace. Yeah, and totally. That, and having, yeah. yeah. And having the faith, it just makes you not fearful because you know that the faith is that you know everything will turn out right. And I've yeah. already seen be, prior to knowing God, I already started to see the pattern in life. Like I would go through problems, it would get worse, and then all of a sudden it gets really amazing. And then I would yes. look back and go, it had to happen. Otherwise, yes. I wouldn't learn this lesson. And then exactly. once again, it goes again, the same pattern, same pattern, <laughs> to the point now I'm certain 
that it's going to be okay. It's just that obviously, you know, we we haven't lived here forever. We don't know what challenges we could hit because they, they could always yeah. be different, right? Coronavirus is completely new to all of us, but it doesn't mean that it's, um, I guess we should be surprised that it's, it's a challenge we haven't been because everyone ch- gets through a challenge that they haven't been through, right? Like first yeah. breakup, heartbreak. We've never gone through it. It's like, oh my God, I'm going to die, right? <laughs> and then, or being a um, single mom. I've never experienced that in my life. Oh my God, this is scary. Right, and then right. you go through it, right? And then, but I, and I guess the fortunate side to this coronavirus is that we are all experiencing it together for the yes. first time versus, mm. you know, normally it's one person that is experiencing something and the other person is, you know, whatever. But I love that this is a community kind of feel right now. And I feel like everyone is yeah. going, I know how you are feeling. How's it going? I feel like we're just connecting a lot more through this exactly exactly yeah 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 so what advice would you give because you know during this time there's a lot of people that are free that are like okay Mm -hmm. they either don't have a job or got their hours reduced they've got more free time and Mm -hmm. of course our advice would be to do something productive right so what would you tell them to do um in terms of um how to make their time more productive at this time I think just building a skill set, just building a, any, any, any skill set. Like you can just YouTube, Google anything. If you want to be, be better at writing emails, if you want to be better at logo designing, if, or if you already have a skill set, like a passion, like you're, you're good at fishing, then why not build out like free PDFs or free things to give to people around the subject, build a blog, write some content. You know, it's su- super cheap to host a website nowadays, like three, five bucks a month. So I think building a skill set, building something that you might either be passionate about or something that you're just interested in learning, that is something that you can literally double down. People have way too much time now. Like a lot of people are hitting me up. People are reaching out. People have so much time. I'm like, man, I got so many ideas going through my mind right now. Like I'll try to execute on everything. And this is where the expansion happens and the delegation, right? But what I would say is build a skill set. There's so many skills that you can learn right now. Something that can add value to the marketplace. And awesome. add value to others, right? Yeah. And then you never know when you come out of this, you're, you go back to work or you're doing something, or you, go, you go back to school, you'll, you'll have that blog, you'll have that, those contents, you're like, wow. And then people yeah. might re- resonate with it and you might have started something, you know, s- started a movement, built, start building a community around it. And man, a lot of great things can come during times like this. It takes a yes. lot of people to take a step back and be like, I'm not busy. Like, what can I do? And then from there, they can learn how to integrate grade it into their life long yeah term. i love it and you know 10 years ago i started my business just around the uh, gfc i wasn't too concerned about what was going on in the world i was just like i needed to start something and so this reminds me of that kind of time again if someone was starting again it's sort of like the time that i started uh but yeah, yeah you had all the time in the world to research in this but it's better now because there's so much content like you said right everyone's and it's because it's free content now everyone's giving free content away yeah. so there's no excuse in learning um awesome now what would you say to um people who is already starting the already has a business mm-hmm. and things are you know slowing down and things are getting a bit crazy right now and they're just yeah. that uncertainty of of what's going to happen with their business right i think it really depends what industry you're in um everyone's in a different industry so depending on if you're a, just a brick and mortar and you've never done anything online. I mean, I know a lot of people are already giving solutions on how to create another source of income or how to cr- take whatever they're doing and make it uh, what, what you could say like integratable, right? Like you can start shifting things in the marketplace. So um, I, I think it just depends what business you're in. Like, let's say I know like the most common ones, like my restaurant, People are doing like takeouts and and all these different things. But I think for restaurants, like what they can be doing too, depending on where you're at as far as like the capital, right? Like just, it just depends. Like you can go out and start giving, start, start marketing to even the local hospital say, Hey, we're giving out like 10 free meals or we're doing this and that. And it comes, Mm -hmm. gets them to be having lunch. So just things to just be innovative. And I think every single business owner needs to become innovative. I mean, I work with clients that are in financial credit, real estate but all these guys are in personal branding. So they've all have whatever their firm is, but then they're trying to take it online by teaching it. And yeah. um, I think right now would be a good time, depending on where you're at. If you got capital to, to go for a couple months, let, let's say worst case scenario, 90 days, you know, they're not la- allowing whatever. 
if, if that were the case and, but you still are able, I'd say, Hey, start building content, start building a YouTube, start building all these different platforms right now. Tons of people are looking up YouTube stuff yeah. right now at this very moment. I'm um, right now I'm going through a, a 30 days, 30 YouTube videos on my channel whether people are watching or not, because I know people are starting to search for things out there. Yeah. So whatever's relevant to me, but it's a lot of things that people can search. Like for example, how to, how to uh, add a pixel to your website, simple stuff, but I know it's going to get a lot of traffic and then they'll start seeing. So start building something online, start building your presence. If you haven't, because you've been so busy, you've been so innovative, yeah. whatever business you're running, I think an online presence is huge and just optimizing your website, making it cleaner, making it simple, yeah. simplifying your systems. That's what I'm doing. I'm taking a step back and looking at all my systems. Speaking about systems, I love the system you had with your VA and how they messaged me. They gave me all this information. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. This is neat. And that's another reason why I back up what you do because just little things like that make the journey, like the, the journey to hop onto the Zoom call was like second to none. I said, wow, this is amazing. You know, like I've, I've, I've had a lot of different Zoom calls with a lot of different businesses, but the way that your VA had it and she was very nice and it, very personable, I was like, this, this is the stuff that people need to be working on right now with their systems. And yeah. I think a lot of people like that. So that's why I said, hey, I back up your service. Awesome. I back your mission and your vision. I love your support. Now, I think the <laughs> takeaway from your advice, both whether you, you have, you're starting out in a, you wanting to start a business or you already have a business is not giving up. It's basically trying to be resourceful, right? Like if you, in your mind, there is no giving up as in there's no option to give up. That means you're going to think of ways to, to make this work. Right. And yeah. like for myself, we're trying, we're trying a new service. We're, changing the roles of the people, right? Normally there's one salesperson. Now there's a, the other seven people are doing a sales role, helping that salesperson, right? So oh, it's wow. really about pivoting the roles, the, the service, wow. whatever it takes to not fail. And, uh, and I've learned that uh, because I was a single mom and I had to kind of find, you know, I have no other choice. You know, when you have no choice, you, yes. you just have to be resourceful. Whereas I think people right now, um, you have two choice. One is giving up means you sit around doing nothing and you just start <laughs> sacking people and then go, oh, okay, this is too hard. Or you be resourceful, like you said. Yeah. So and go actually going off that because right now, even in my business, like I do, I do a lot of digital products. I, I sell uh, physical products too on different uh, platforms from either Amazon or Shopify. So I build brands and stuff, but I don't have to change anything really. Like mm -hmm. nothing is changing. I don't need to change or lower my prices. Even for my, I have a, a mastermind group where I get people that want to build personal brands and want to learn about organic traffic. I don't yeah. need to switch anything right now in this moment. Like, and I don't need to use what's going on in the world as a scarcity tactic or fear yeah. tactic. Cause I don't think that's right to do that. You, you, you instill fear in them. They're going to come in with even more fear, right? Yeah. So you still want to do what you're doing. Yeah. You can leverage and, uh, and structure your offer and talk more about it, but I don't think you can, you can use fear as like the, the bait out there yeah. into the marketplace. Yeah. And I told that with all my clients, I said, that, that's not, how we're going to do it. We're just going to shift. We're going to adapt. I have a workout client, you know, they don't have, yeah. Uh, they don't have, they have all their stuff's gym workouts. So we, I said, Hey, let's do some home workouts quick. Let's pump out something quick. So then we can start leveraging it for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Looking. So yeah. Yeah. I really love it. I mean, a, a lot of entrepreneurs I've been talking to in the past few days, um, very positive. Everyone's sort of like, you know, time to hustle, time to work more. Um, so yeah, I, I think, yeah, even being just being entrepreneurs, we're already kind of resourceful, you know? So once exactly. people become an entrepreneur, yeah, that's just the way we roll, right? Yes, hey, yes. <laughs> before we go on, I want to throw in this five, um, five fast question, this or that. So basically this is a segment where you just have to choose between two choices, okay? So that we get to know you a little bit, all right? Okay. All right. So number one, holiday in Sydney or holiday in Bali? Uh, probably Sydney. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. You've been here before? I haven't. That's why. Ah, or Bali. Nice. I haven't been in Bali either, but every, I feel like everyone goes to Bali. So I'm like, I, yeah. I like Sydney. Nice. Nice. <laughs> uh, freedom or justice? Mm, freedom. Freedom. Okay. Why? Uh, I think, I, I, I don't know. I'm more like a, a freedom type of person, I guess, yeah. versus justice. I was like, ah, I'm more laid back and chill when it comes down to it. But yeah, I, you know, you want to get work done, but the freedom is, yeah. I just feel free, you know, like out yeah. there, like flying wings. Yeah, I, I can show you. I have a tattoo named freedom right there. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, is that a fish? 
it's no, it's it's a word. Sorry, it's written. It's scribble. It's 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 a yeah, but it's that, calligraphy. It looks like a fish. Oh really? No, no, that's actually a Christian symbol. Really? I've always been a Christian. I didn't know it, but yeah, but <laughs> no, it's not a fish, but it might look like a fish. But um, I know I gotta show it to you. It looks exactly alike. Okay, show me after this. <laughs> All right, third one. Uh, summer or winter? Summer. Summer. You got yeah. the summer bod down there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, YouTube or Netflix? YouTube. Uh, okay. Um, meetings face to face or virtual meetings? Mm, uh, I like I like meetings face to face. In person. Yeah. Yeah, because they just feel the vibe. They feel the energy a lot more. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to learn that recently. Like I was always online and then, yeah, recently I started to -to face-to-face and I really enjoy it. It's just like fun and so I love it. Well, that's the five question about you. We really got to know you there. Um, So what is the best thing about you? Like what do you feel like you are best known for and and who do you really help? You know, every time I get like feedback from people, I think it's just the energy a lot of people say there's like, there's a different type of energy and this isn't for me. This is just from like Mm -hmm. people after people like over and over and over again. So I always take feedback from people and I, I try to see, okay, why do they see that? And then at the end of it, like I, you know, I feel like clients still even still work with me because they're just like getting on a phone or a call like this. And we're just like, this is what we do. This is how we get it. Boom, boom, boom. You know, and just that energy, it gets them like re re, like re restructures their brain and how they want to move and how we should move. And, and that confidence in that, on that execution as well. So yeah, I think the energy, I, uh, I get a lot of comments on like my smile too. So <laughs> whatever, you know, whichever ones, I think, I think that's what it is. And I guess you could see what I'm known for is I've always, even in high school, I've always been known as like the, the person that's positive, very uplifting. Yeah. So it's always been a part of me. And then now I'm using, I'm using whatever that, that feedback is and what I've always been. Yeah. Using uh, just uh, actually leveraging God's word or, you know, yeah. just being a vessel to share God's word because God's word is good. God's good all the time. All the time, God is good. So that is the kind of been the mission. Yeah. And so you've got a, a few things that people can connect you with. You've got a Facebook group. Can you share a little few things that people can connect with you, with you and depending on who they are? Because I know with established businesses, they can also get your help with consulting with their personal branding and business branding and everything else. Yeah. yeah give us a few range of ways that people that connect can, can work with you or connect with you. Okay. Yeah. And and this is why I actually started a Facebook group recently because I've been doing it for a few clients. I just see the leverage. I see where Facebook groups are going. If you guys look, cause I'm all about organic Facebook and I've been doing it for almost three, 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 three years, but now, and what I realized is that recently Facebook's been optimizing for Facebook groups. If you actually start, Mm -hmm. if you, if right now at this, this point, you know, first quarter of 2020, if you refresh it right now, you'll see more Facebook groups in your feed that pop up more than other people that are your friends. So Mm. that's the only reason I started doing Facebook groups because that's where you can get a lot more attention. This is where you can get more leverage, more authority. And if you have the wisdom, if you have the knowledge to share and build a community right now, Facebook is building towards communities. People want to build into communities. We're seeing it right now. Everyone to get people onto like webinars, onto zoom calls, but big meetings, right? Where people can go face to face. So Facebook group, uh, I, I did that for mainly personal branding and e-commerce because that's just my background. Um, I just started building YouTube um, this last this last uh, year in, in 2019. I started building it and it kind of grew a lot in this last few months. And then, um, yeah, and then Instagram, I, I'm not as crazy on Instagram. My, my main platforms are Facebook and YouTube. I'm starting to get into LinkedIn. I, ha- I had a team that helped me with LinkedIn. Um, but I'm pretty much on, on most, most of those platforms. So Facebook, YouTube, I, got, I do have a Facebook group. Instagram and uh, LinkedIn and it's, it's all across the board. It's just RC Simon. Yeah. Awesome. I'll share uh, all your links in the bottom for people. Well, before you go, I'd like to ask you one question. What does being a kind boss mean to you? I think being a kind boss to me is someone that, cause you know, you, uh, everything rises and falls on leadership, right? We've heard this a lot. And I think what happens from the top is going to stem down in how you build your leaders and how your leaders build the people at the bottom line, right? The, the foot soldiers. So I think a, a kind boss is someone that 
puts people before it before profits. Yeah. And that's what we were, we were just talking about this. Most companies are going to fail because all they think about is the money, 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 the money, money, money for the whole time. They don't even take care of the people that's building the business. So being someone that's kind, that has value, actually value what the people believe in. You know? Yeah. Like, on the bottom line. And like actually care for them. Yeah. Like, care for them. Like, oh, do you have kids? Do you have a family? Like, what are your hobbies? Are you happy? You know, what, what can we do to... To, to increase not just productivity, but increase happiness in the workplace, build the yeah. culture community. So that's what I believe a, a kind boss is. Boom. Somebody- Love that. Totally. I, I know that's yours. I know that's you. you. You talk about building it so you can help people in the Philippines yeah. too. Right. And you want to be able to establish, I was looking into your company. I just love the vision. I love the mission. And that's why I don't know these companies that are for purpose companies are going to push through whatever. Yeah. You know, now you. you have the Lord, so that's yeah. even better. <laughs> yeah, transforms yeah. your heart even more. Yeah. You know, it's just going to rise. You're going to rise. Yeah. With God. When we that. get through this, we know we're going to be a different company in terms of people's connection and people's yes. drive. So, yeah, it's been amazing. But, um, Amen. you know, just in time, the kids are starting to get noisy. If, if, this, <laughs> if, if you can hear through it, it's my apology. You know, coronavirus, kids are at home. So if you're listening to this, please forgive me with all that bit of a noise, noise, noise. <laughs> 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 but thank you so much RC for um yeah your time today and yeah you are so generous with your advice and information yeah when once people connect with you they'll see that you're just pumping out content but it's so relevant it's so like current right and so I really encourage people to connect with you so thank you RC I'll, we'll catch up with again soon God bless you, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you for joining our podcast today. We hope this interview has inspired and humbled you to be a kind boss. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and let us know what you think about our show. If you have any questions, please visit OutsourcingAngel.com. Until then, stay kind and spread love.